Well, let's try to move on then towards formal proof. Uh, so let's let R be an equivalence relation on some set S. And we are going to define an equivalence class X to mean this. It's all of those elements Y that are related to X under the relation R. Now, if we're going to show that this set of equivalence classes is a partitioning of the set S, then we need to show two things. First of all, we have to show that we have covered the set S, which is to say that for every T in S, T is in some equivalence class. And then finally, we'll have to show that for any two equivalence classes, either the two equivalence classes are equal or their overlap is empty. Let's take a look at this first property. Is it true that every T in S is in some equivalence class? Well, certainly it is. T has to be in its own equivalence class. Why is that? It's because R, being an equivalence relation, is reflective, uh, and therefore T is related to itself. Next, we want to show that the set of equivalence classes is a partitioning of the set S, and the form we'll be working with is this. Either two equivalence classes are equal, or they are non-intersecting. So let's let X and Y be elements of the set, and we'll consider the corresponding equivalence classes. If X and Y have an empty intersection, then we don't need to consider them any further. Uh, that's what we want to show either two equivalence classes don't overlap or they're equal. So let's then suppose that there is some element in the intersection of X and Y. Our goal then will be to show that the equivalence class of X and the equivalence class of Y are in fact equal. So let T be the equivalence class of X. It must be the case then by definition that X is related to T. And if T is in Y, then it must be the case that y is related to t. We can turn this relationship around by symmetry, and then x is related to t, and t is related to y, so that x is related to y by transitivity. Now then, let v be anything in the equivalence class of x. Then by definition of the equivalence class, x is related to v. And therefore, V is related to X by symmetry. And we already justified the fact that X is related to Y. So by transitivity, V is related to Y, and therefore Y to V. But if Y is related to V, then that means that V is in the equivalence class of Y. And so for every V in the equivalence class of X, V is also in the equivalence class of Y. That shows that thinking of these now as subsets of S, the set of elements equivalent to X is a subset of the elements that are equivalent to Y. You can prove the opposite inclusion that Y is a subset of the equivalence class of X in exactly this way. I'll let you write that part of the proof. This shows then that the equivalence class of X is equal to the equivalence class of Y. That's under the assumption that there is some element in the intersection. So what we've shown is this. Either the intersection is empty, or if it's not, then the equivalence classes are equal. Well, that's what we wanted to show. The equivalence classes of the elements of S form a partitioning of the set S. Well, we've shown then that no T in the set S is in two distinct equivalence classes of R. If T is in X and T is in Y, then X and Y as equivalence classes must be equal. Going to the next page then, we've shown that the equivalence classes of R partition S. So that tells us that every equivalence relation on S induces a partition of S. Next, we want to prove that every partition of S induces an equivalence relation, what we've been calling R up to this point. Well, let's let S1, S2, etc. be some partitioning of the set S. 
We're going to define our equivalence relation R in the usual way. We'll say that X is related to Y if and only if there is some single subset SK so that uh, both X is in SK and Y is in SK. What we need to show is that this relation is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. For reflexive, let S be an element in the big set S. Since the SI partition S, there has to be some subset K that contains little s. Little s is in SK and little s is in SK tells us that s is related to itself. For the symmetry property, suppose s is related to t. Then there has to be a subset that contains both s and t. This is true no matter which order we write it in. So if we reverse the order, we could say that t is related to s and that's what we wanted to show. Therefore, R is symmetric. For transitivity, suppose that S is related to T and T is related to V. Then, since S is related to T, we have to have some subset in the partition that contains both S and T. Likewise, since T is related to V, there is some subset in the partition so that T and V are both in that subset. What we want to show is that those two subsets are equal. Well, T is in SK and T is in SJ means that it's in the intersection. But since we have a set partitioning, we then know that SK and SJ are equal. That is to say that since T and V must be in the same subset SK. Why? Because K and J are the same. But then we have S, T, and V all in one subset, say SK, and that tells us that S and V are in the same set and therefore related to each other. Well, then we have what we wanted to show. S related to T, T related to V shows that S is related to V. Consequently, the relation R is reflective, symmetric, and transitive, and therefore is an equivalence relation.